Even look at Roseanne. I called her yesterday. Look at her ratings. Look at her ratings. They were unbelievable. Over 18 million people. That was right after Roseanne's first show. This morning, Roseanne Barr, the star of the ABC hit show Roseanne, tweeted a vicious, racist statement about a highly accomplished black woman. And this afternoon, another highly accomplished black woman announced that Roseanne was fired. While Valerie Jarrett was working her way up in the corporate world in Chicago and then in politics with her friend Barack Obama, in whose White House she served for eight years, Channing Dungy was working her way up in executive jobs and show business. She joined ABC in 2004 as a vice president overseeing development of drama series. Channing Dungy became the president of ABC Entertainment two and a half years ago. And as her ABC official bio proudly states, Dungy has shepherded in a wide variety of successful programming, including the most watched show on television, Roseanne. Knowing TV networks as I do, especially in the, in the entertainment division, I expected ABC to try to tough it out today and survive the crisis Roseanne created because the show's ratings are so good. When Roseanne tweeted this apology, I immediately said that this was a network-forced apology using language that Roseanne herself would never use. Here it is. I apologize to Valor Valerie Jarrett and to all Americans. I am truly sorry for making a bad joke about her politics and her looks. I should have known better. Forgive me, my joke was in bad taste. That tweet sounded to me like the network was desperately trying to save its top-rated show, but I don't know Channing Dungy. Never worked with her. It turns out she wasn't trying to save Roseanne. This afternoon, Channing Dungy, who does not tweet, released this statement. Roseanne's Twitter statement is abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values, and we have decided to cancel her show. At his rally tonight, this time, Donald Trump did not say one word about Roseanne. Joining our discussion now, Jamil Smith, the senior writer for Rolling Stone, joining us from Los Angeles, and Jason Johnson is back with us. Uh, and Jamil, this uh, story moved faster than many in show business expected it to. I think people were waiting uh, to watch ABC try to get through a day or two and maybe even a week or two with this. Uh, but it uh, turned very quickly on Roseanne. Yes, I mean, we've been exposed to the NFL's corporate cowardice uh, recently, and certainly we, you know, I think a lot of us expected that uh, that ABC would either stay silent or simply uh, discipline her, maybe suspend her, what have you. But uh, it is a relief to see that there are, in fact, social consequences for these kinds of statements. Uh, it, it, they hired her knowing that she was a conspiracy theorist on Twitter. They hired her knowing ab her about her anti-Semitic and, uh, and, and racist statements and Islamophobic statements. And they, you know, they wrote it out this long. And I think it, 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 when you get to the old school racist term, ape, I think that may be a bridge too far for anyone. Let's listen to what Val Valerie Jarrett said about this on MSNBC tonight. I think we have to turn it into a teaching moment. I'm fine. I'm worried about all the people out there who don't have a circle of friends and followers who come right to their defense. Jason Johnson, Valerie Jarrett uh, handled it very uh, graciously tonight on MSNBC. Yeah, yeah, she's a better woman than I am. Uh, because, look, I, it, it, it was disgusting. It, it was unreasonable. And I, I, I think we live in a wonderful country where there are gracious, kind people who can be attacked on a regular basis uh, and can say fine things in response. But I think that what Roseanne did and the entire scenario in which she was hired is problematic. And that's what we need to speak about. Yes, it's great that Channing Dungy fired her now. You hired her, just like Jamil said, knowing that this is the kind of behavior she had. Who knows how she was possibly behaving on set? And we we have to think about, in a larger structural way, we talk about notions of racism, institutional racism, and privilege. Think about this. All Roseanne had to do to keep her job is not compare a black woman to an ape. Think about that. And she couldn't do that. She couldn't even do that. That's the kind of structural racism that we're talking about, that people lack such a, a, a reasonable level of self-control 
that they can't go back to 500-year-old stereotypes about race. So I hope this isn't just a lesson for Roseanne Barr. I hope this is a lesson for ABC. I hope this is a lesson for every single other entertainment network out there, that this behavior is inappropriate, it will cost you money, it will cost you a reputation, and it will make it impossible for you to continue to produce. And I hope that's what people get out of this, not just some sort of free speech argument. Uh, Jamil, uh, Donald Trump, after the uh, first episode uh, aired uh, this year and got a huge rating, Donald Trump told his rally audience as we just saw, that it was about us, that the show was about <laughs> us. He didn't ha have any words about the show tonight. That is a really interesting statement coming from him, and I think it actually qualifies as a lie, because the, <laughs> the median income for Trump voters, uh, in no matter what income bracket you look at, was higher than the right. median income for Clinton voters. If you're looking at uh, you know, folks making fifty to $100,000, the median income was 72 for uh, Trump voters, 61,000 for Clinton voters. So if you want to talk about us, we might be talking about Clinton voters, and it's funny that they hired Roseanne to essentially uh, you know, stereotype his people and make fun of them. And, uh, Jason, when you look at a lot of Roseanne's tweets prior to today with the conspiracy right. theories uh, and really uh, strange information, she seems to be using a lot of the same news sources that Donald Trump uses. Right. Uh, you know, saying that George Soros was a Nazi collaborator, uh, comparing Susan Rice, you know, to an ape as well. I mean, she, she sort of trafficked in the same kind of nonsense uh, that the president regular traffics in, the conspiracy theories. And, and again, I, I think there wow. was a mistake on behalf uh, of the people who hired her and brought this back, thinking that, well, this must represent where America is moving. This must represent uh, what a lot of Americans feel. And that's not true. The vast majority of Americans aren't conspiracy nuts. And I think for the last couple of years, people have become very comfortable with what is said on Duck Dynasty and, and what's said by certain celebrities. Oh, it's just, it's politics, this, that, the other. But America is changing. And this is not what the American consumer wants to see. And I, I think that, that the quick response of firing Roseanne so quickly is not just financial, but it's also a realization on the behalf of this network that, like, hey, you know, uh, th this is a blue wave coming. America doesn't want this. They don't want this kind of behavior. They're not all conspiracy nuts, and we shouldn't be promoting that on TV or coddling people who have those beliefs. And, Jamil, mm -hmm. uh, ABC knew that the questions about this were never going to go away. Right. And, I mean, to Jason's point, they not only knew, but also they, they, they understood that it was potentially profitable for them. And so they've exploited this uh, caricature. And I think, you know, also to, uh, something else that Jason said, I think that we've, you know, yes, most Americans are not conspiracy nuts, but we hired one as president. And what effect does that have on the viewing audience? What effect, frankly, does that even have even on her castmates? There's a black child who was cast as her granddaughter in the show, or a black woman, Wanda Sykes, who was a writer on the show. Does she think that they're apes too? It's, it'd be one, I, I actually would like to ask Roseanne that question, but she blocked me on Twitter. Uh, and Jason, <laughs> it seems that ABC uh, learned uh, a lesson that NBC did not learn uh, when it had Donald Trump under contract for that show because Donald Trump was attacking the president's birth certificate uh, and lying about uh, President uh, Obama's birth for years while he was appearing as an entertainer on NBC. ABC uh, sh uh, showed zero tolerance for what Roseanne had to say today, and NBC showed total tolerance for everything that Donald Trump said for years about the president's birth. Yeah, it's always been strange. There seems to be this sort of nuclear force field bubble around Donald Trump's behavior that he is allowed to be offensive and sexist and vulgar, but the same behavior and other actors and actresses ends up costing people their jobs, whether you're talking about Roseanne or, or Harvey Weinstein or, or Jeffrey Tambor, you know, that kind of abusive behavior and that kind of abusive or racist language ends up costing people jobs. I hope, since we only seem to have one Donald Trump at this particular point, I hope that, again, this ends up being a lesson that this sort of behavior doesn't continue. And I also think this, and I, this is something I think is really important to remember in the context of him or Cosby or anything else like that. Roseanne's selfishness 
has cost mm -hmm. dozens of people their jobs. The, the, the key grips, the camera people, the food delivery folks, yeah. all of those people have lost their jobs at a hit show that was helping them feed their families because she couldn't control their bigotry. Yes, maybe the black daughter on her show get adopted by Blackish. I'd watch that episode. It'd be funny, <laughs> right? But most of the rest of those people are not going to have work. And I, and I hope America realizes that bigotry is not just about making somebody feel bad. It costs money. It costs jobs. Sometimes it costs lives. We can't accept it anymore. Jason Johnson and Jamil Smith, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Lawrence.